eight speed test three years later let's begin with a boot up in three two one now i know officially later this year is the official three years but this is still their third year on the market 2017 these phones came out it is now 2020 i'm not gonna have time to do this one later this year so i wanted to conduct it early also i did the galaxy s8 versus the iphone 10 and it's always fun to see kind of how the Older Samsung performs next to the older iPhone, kind of see how they perform over the long term. You can see that the Samsung is way behind here on this boot up test, not even close. A crushing victory there on the boot up test for the iPhone 10. Okay, so when it comes to their unlocking methods, you can see iPhone 10 did go away with the fingerprint sensor and brought in Face ID, which a lot of people have come to accept by now. Some still like their Touch ID, but very fast performance there. Now, what was neat about the Galaxy Note 8, just like the S8, is that it does have a fingerprint sensor on the back, and it also had an iris sensor or iris scanner to help you unlock with your face securely as well. And so you can see right here, it also had face recognition. So face recognition to the face scanning like the newer Samsung's iris scanners or fingerprint sensors. So this was like the most customizable phone you could use when it comes to unlocking your phone. There was multiple different ways to do this. But for this test, we're just gonna test the iris scanner because that's the one that actually, I think mattered the most here when it comes to face unlock. So you can see right there, there's the iris. And as you look, it does unlock. Now, sometimes, you know, it would take a little bit of a second, but once you got used to, you know, using the iris scanner, it was a really neat feature and I do miss this for the newer Samsungs. I wish that was still on the newer Samsung devices. So confirming their software, the iPhone 10 in this video is gonna be running 13.3.1. Now the Galaxy Note 8 has pretty much received all of its updates it's gonna get, except for security, we should get more of that. Android 9 Pie on this one. And also we do have one UI 1.0, so nowhere near the most current One UI version. Okay, so we've arrived at the application portion of this speed test. You can see everything closed on both four gigs of RAM, six gigs of RAM, Snapdragon 835, and Apple A11 Bionic chipset. there and weather and it's unfortunate that the Galaxy Note 8 is not going to get the newer One UIs because it's not going to have the smoother gesture so the gestures are always going to feel smoother on iPhone 10. Let's go into uh, Instagram. You could see Instagram was first there for iPhone 10. Now both of these are still very good phones in terms of scrolling just everyday usability. They're very functional so if you bought these phones now you just wanted a Samsung or you know an iPhone flagship but you didn't want to pay the big bucks. These are really good phones still. The cameras are just a little behind the current times but these phones are really strong devices still I think overall as an overall package. Let's go into Twitter and you could see Twitter open there first for the Galaxy Note 8 and scrolling through, a little choppier there on the Note 8. That's where Samsung has really improved in the current year right now with their 120 hertz displays. The iPhone was a little bit smoother in these days. Let's go into Snapchat. You can see Snapchat, I couldn't see that one. I think it was a Note 8, I could be wrong, let me know down below. Let's go into YouTube. We'll head over to the Explore tab here on both. And how about we go to Gaming real quick and see what happens here. Yeah, pretty fast when it comes to that iPhone 10. I would say that the iPhone 10 was a little faster there in YouTube, but the Note has a better screen for viewing that YouTube content. Let's go into speed test. And you can see that is the iPhone 10 for sure. So the iPhone 10 a little bit faster there. Let's go into Amazon. You can see Amazon first there for the iPhone 10. It was a snappier phone, I feel like, in this era, but that six gigs of RAM did help the Note propel itself to a better performance than the S8 Plus for sure. Let's go into eBay. So if you were deciding between S8, like S8 Plus and Note 8, I would still say get the Note 8. It's the better phone than the S8 Plus in terms of performance. Let's go into Pandora. And we might have to skip the ad here. Yeah, it does that on Android. So we're gonna go ahead and do this one more time for Pandora, it's just an Android thing. Let's go into Pandora and you could see there we go. So the iPhone was still faster, nevertheless. Let's go into Geekbench 5. 
You could see iPhone faster there once again. And so let's go into PUBG Mobile and see which one is faster. And the iPhone has historically done better here. And I still think even in 2020, the iPhone has the better games, uh, the better game selection. So yeah, the Note was never my pick for this one, but it's not bad. And so you can see the Galaxy Note 8 still loading up and not too far behind the iPhone 10, but definitely behind there. But when you're in gaming, I do find that the Note 8 just doesn't perform quite as well as the iPhone 10. Let's go into Dead Trigger 2. See how they do here. Uh, looks like the Note 8 is going to win this one. We'll see. Nope, the iPhone 10 has taken the crown there. Let's hit play. And you can see the iPhone 10 a little bit ahead. So far, this whole entire speed test, you know, I'm seeing that the iPhone 10 just seems like the faster device. It seems to have aged better than this Galaxy Note 8. Let's go into Mortal Kombat. And a lot of people say, I told you so. This is why I bought an iPhone 10. This is why I buy iPhone is because it just ages better. And you might have a good reason there. We just have to see how these newer Samsungs are going to age, though, in the S20 series, as these have much better hardware than these older Samsung devices. I would bet they're going to age much better than we've seen here with the Note 8, the S8 series. You can see it's just no contest. The iPhone 10 was just so much farther ahead, graphically speaking here, over the Note 8. So I think the moral here is that if you're going to buy one of these two, you know, the iPhone 10 is going to feel smoother. It's going to feel like the better experience all around day to day. The Note 8 is not a bad phone. It's not slow, but it's a little choppier than the iPhone 10. I just have to be straight up honest with you. And a lot of people say, Nick, you're not even really testing the true performance. You're just doing read write speeds. These are not technical tests. I open apps day to day. I'm sure you do too. And I want to see the difference between both of them. And I could tell you day to day when you're opening your apps, the iPhone 10 is going to feel smoother and quicker. And not only that, when you're actually scrolling in those apps, the iPhone 10 looks a little smoother than the Note 8, but that doesn't make the Note 8 a slow phone. These are both quick devices. And so what I want to see here now is will either of these phones reload anything when we're going through these apps one more time and you see that pretty good to go there on the first application both pretty similar let's go into dead trigger you can see pretty similar there let's go into pubg mobile you can definitely see the little bit of a choppier animation when going in and out again on the note geekbench reloads there for the note so more ram and still reloading applications that kind of always happens the pandora is kind of set up to re-listen on android so that one don't really count let's go into ebay i might start removing that app from the next speed test you can see ebay here definitely a little bit of a reload there for the note reload there on both of them for amazon but the note got a little bit hung there let's go into speed test and you can see the note yeah the note had to relook iphone a little smoother there let's go into youtube and a reload there for the Galaxy on YouTube. So not looking good here for the Galaxy Note 8. The iPhone a little smoother there. Twitter, wow, you are letting me down right now, Galaxy. Let's go into Instagram. But don't take that as the newer ones are letting me down. This one right here is just letting me down. In this particular test, wow, it's choppy coming back. Let's go into weather. Oh, oh, nope, that's a little slow there on weather. Let's go into calculator. Pretty good. Clock. Pretty good. And calendar. A little bit of a stutter there on the calendar at the end. I'm not trying to come off like I'm biased. I'm just telling you, this phone right here in the Galaxy is just not looking as smooth as the iPhone 10 here in 2020. Okay, so let's head to a few websites. How about Target.com here on the iPhone and Target.com here for the Galaxy Note 8. Let's hit go. You can see the iPhone a little snappier there. Pinch to zooming. Even the pinch of zooming is a lot smoother for the newer, you know, the newer Samsung devices. So let's head over here and now go to walmart.com. I'm just going to do some retail right now. You can see I was searching for hand sanitizer earlier. Let's go into walmart.com, three, two, one. And you can see, looks like walmart.com was first here for the iPhone 10. I can tell you, man, it's just smoother. Right now, it's just a smoother experience on the iPhone 10. We'll do another one. How about we go to eBay.com here on the web browser, not the, you know, eBay.com for the application. Let's hit go. And you can see just faster there for iPhone 10. So honestly, when it comes down to performance, if I was picking one of these, I think the 10 is a better recommendation right now. This speed test is showing that 
Over the long haul, this iPhone has beat out this Note 8. And so let's go to Geekbench just to kind of see how they do perform in the benchmark. The iPhone usually always wins in terms of completing this test, but I'll be back with the final results. Now you can see, I'm gonna come back in a second again, but you can see the iPhone's already done. We're barely at 55% of this test on the Galaxy. Now I don't know if this is an optimization thing between Android's Geekbench app and iOS's Geekbench app, or if it's just the processor performance is just much better, but you can see it takes a way longer time to run this test for the Galaxy. I will be back when it's done. And so here we are with the final scores, almost three times better on the iPhone 10. And you can see on the multi-core, about a thousand points better almost on the iPhone 10, more like 700, but still, you know, the iPhone 10, not only in the Geekbench is crushing the Note 8, but in the performance. Now, when I say crushing, don't get it confused. The iPhone 10 is not the perfect device. It's got a huge notch on the front before you say, oh, he's just, he's just loving that Apple product. That's what he loves to do. I will tell you that the Note 8 is still a great option as well. You can see that the, the iPhone doesn't have this thick of a chin, but you trade off that notch. This is more, you know, seamless to some people. You don't have this right here. The S Pen, this is still a very productive device. So a one to two to second three second difference on the applications is not gonna be your only deciding factor between buying one of these yesteryear devices if you're in the market for a used smartphone. So for me, there's still a very close call. If you want more productivity, you want the larger screen, the Note 8 right now is still the better pick and it's cheaper. If you want a probably a smoother experience for sure, you know, the more refined software, something that doesn't feel quite, uh, it feels a little bit more up to date with its software. You know, if you don't look at the back, it still kind of feels like an 11 Pro. Uh, the 11 or the iPhone 10 will please you a little bit more. And that's only because Apple doesn't change change their phones as often as Samsung does. They change it up every year, basically giving you something radically, almost radically different. Yeah, they're still slabs, but they at least change enough to make it feel like a different phone. So that's it for me. Thumbs up if you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know if you wanna see more yesteryear used device comparisons, or if you just wanna keep seeing some of the newer stuff, let me know down below in the comment section. And I kept the black background as many of you really loved it. So we'll keep this around for a little while. We'll see how it goes. I will catch you all in the next episode. Be sure to take care of yourself and peace.